Hey everyone, hopefully you're doing well. Welcome to the Jesus King podcast. How are you doing, Emil? I'm well, thanks. How are you? Good, man. Um, did you enjoy your break? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so did I, man. It was uh, it was good to have some time off Christmas. Uh, yeah. It was it wasn't like I wasn't working, but mm -hmm. you know, some some breaks slowing down was really good for me. Yeah, and hopefully it was good for you. Definitely. Um, we got an important topic today. Uh, we're speaking about the gospel. Uh, we're not speaking about what is the gospel. I think that's pretty straightforward. Yeah. And I really hope that it is a straightforward answer for yourself. Uh, but what we want to talk about today is we want to deal with about compromise and fear. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe we can start with compromising. And I think the most obvious one is compromising the actual message. Okay. Yeah. So it's mainly we're talking about preaching the gospel and it's yes. teaching about it. Okay. Yeah. So to to you, have you had an experience mm -hmm. where you've compromised the gospel? You were on the spot. You felt mm -hmm. like you should have said more or... I, I wouldn't say should have. Like I've never been in a position where I had to say it, but I could have, but I didn't see a reason why. So I wouldn't say I've ever compromised. Um. I, I guess maybe when I was really young, maybe I would have had a friend that was um, uh, part of the LGBT community. And I just told that person, like, you know, the part where God loves you, even though you're a sinner, just come to. But see, even there, I don't see it as a compromise because I even told her, like, um, God loves you. Come to him and he'll change you. Mm. I never said, like, oh, you're fine the way you are. I just said, it's fine to come the way you are and he'll change you. So I made it very clear that the, you won't be staying the same. Yeah. But um, cool. God loves you. Yeah. But, so I didn't, I didn't, I've never compromised. I don't know. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, well, that's something that we can actually talk about. It's because mm. um, this is actually one of the challenges that sometimes a Christian will face. It might be because of pressure mm. or it might be because uh, sometimes even desperation right mm -hmm. um you, you have that sense of desperation it might be a family member it might be a friend and you really want them to come to christ have eternal life mm -hmm. and obviously not to go to hell and you feel like you're not really sharing everything that needs yeah. to be shared with that person um and 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 sometimes i see uh, it's becoming a bit more common I, I've seen on YouTube. Mm. Um, I've seen on YouTube, especially like YouTubers evangelizing to other YouTubers. Yeah. And and they speak about, I was depressed, I had anxieties, Jesus came, changed my life. And the other person would just reply saying, oh, cool, if that worked for you, great. I've I've got a personal psychologist. You know, that's why they make Jesus out to be like some kind of yeah, yeah so, on call so, psychologist. So that that to me is like that's not the heart of the gospel. The heart mm. of the gospel that Jesus came, died on the cross, resurrected on the third day mm -hmm. for our sins. Correct. And um, <clears throat> I don't have an issue with sharing saying Jesus can heal your mental health. 100%. By all means, we did a episode on that. Mm -hmm. You and um, Abraham. Abraham. But the idea is that people can have mental health mm -hmm. or people can be healed of that. Absolutely. But if their sin is on them, then there is no redemption. There's no justification. Yeah. So I, f I feel like I I'm starting to see that becoming more often. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I mean, uh, people, people treat Jesus like a lottery ticket. Nowadays, mm. they treat him, whether it's for <laughs> money or uh, sometimes quite literally like, oh, Jesus is going to help me. He's going to provide me with uh, with shelter. And they use the verse where, you know, Jesus talks about how he even provides for the birds. So how would he not provide for them? And it's like, yeah, but that's not what he's trying to say. He's saying, don't worry. He's not saying, you know, uh, you if you want a Bugatti, wish hard enough to Christ and then you'll get it. No, it's it's or if your health is, you know bad that's when you come to god when it's convenient for you that's that's not the only reason or that's not even one of one of the, the top 10 reasons why you should come to christ the main reason you need to come to christ is because 
you are dying and i mean that spiritually you're dead more yeah you, you you're, you're you've already got yeah. that like your death has already been signed off it's gonna happen and i'm not talking about your physical death i'm talking about your spiritual death you're going to die and what's gonna happen next is not gonna be great it's horrible but that's why you need jesus you need someone to save you. you're very very sick you're ill don't worry about and you're worried about the little things like oh yeah but what about my soup it's not hot enough like yeah but you're dying that's maybe we should worry about the medicine first and then we can worry about you know if your bedding is a bit itchy or you know what you're yeah. wearing or things like things that are not that important i mean i know that some people say well i'm coming to christ for my family member and i understand their heart is in the right place but ultimately your first goal should be for your salvation and not only for yours but also for your families so you come to christ because you want to be saved you you come to christ because you want your family to be saved as well you love your family and and that's why we preach it's because we want the people that we're preaching to to be saved we don't gain anything from it yeah I, true. I, we don't really you you've been yeah freely you're received freely give exactly yeah so we we're given this grace by Christ. We're not giving anything from ourselves. We're giving what Christ has given to us. We're giving it to others as well. So we're just passing it on. That's all we're doing. So it's like someone bought us something amazing. And we're like, wow, this healed me. I'm, I'm cured. I want everyone to be cured, right? Because now that horrible thing that I had in me is gone. And now I think about others, or at least I'm getting to that point where I think about others like how Christ thinks about them how he loves them. I'll try to see it from his point of view. I, I don't see this person as a stranger. I try to see him from Christ's point of view. I'm not there yet, but I'm trying. I want to get to that point where uh, I see everyone the way Christ sees them. And if I do that, why would I want that person to remain sick? If I truly love this person, mm. I would do everything in my power to heal them, to, to not with my own strength, but, what, but with what Christ has given me, which is the medicine, which is the gospel. Right. Yeah. And I want to spread it. Yeah. True. Um, that's a very good point. Um, and, and and the difficult part is, if you're compromising the gospel, mm. right? You you're sharing something that is not biblical <clears throat> or half truth. Um, what we don't realize is that we're leading that person to something other than salvation. Yeah. Because the truth would lead you to Christ. It's a narrow path. A lie is not going to lead you to Christ. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what I like Paul says in 1 Timothy 4.16. He says, take heed to yourselves and to the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Yes. Now, obviously, the context is of he's trying to remind Timothy to make sure that he's, he's preaching and he's teaching is biblical according to the scripture. Yep. It's according to the gospel that's been preached by the apostles. Yep. I get that. But that's also something that we can take out into the world. If we're not if we're not careful about our own doctrine mm. and and our own message, are we really able to share salvation with others? No. We're so, just bring in condemnation ourselves. Yeah. And, and I like it because he says here that um, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and those no. who hear you. Um, this is so important. I mean, not only are we sharing a lie if we're not preaching the gospel, but we're also putting ourselves under condemnation. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think we'd be judged a lot harsher when we do that rather than if we did nothing at all. Yeah. And, and that's why, like, the real gospel would lead you to Christ. The false gospel would lead you to hell. Yeah. Because you're giving someone a false assurance, mm -hmm. a, sh a false hope that is not grounded in Christ yeah. and, and the message of the gospel. And if you look at Galatians chapter 1, verse 8 and 10, I've mm. got it here as well. And this is Paul. Is, he's being very careful here. And he's using very strong language. He's saying, but even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. Wow. So now it's not about you're just leading people to a false hope. 
you're also bringing a curse on yourself. Yeah. Um, and and he, this is a curse from God. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want this. It, that's that's what the Bible says. Yeah. And he continues, he's saying, as we have said before, so now I say again. And this is the scary part because he's like, just in case you missed it, I'm going to tell you again. If anyone preaches any other gospel to you, then what you have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God, mm. or do I seek to please men? For if I... If, sorry, for if I still please men, I would not be a bond servant of Christ. And that kind of connects to the first point that we were talking about is that we we might not say it maliciously, yeah. right? Yeah. But it's kind of like uh, out of that desperation at times. Yeah. Or, we, we're out. Yeah. Sometimes. Or like, you know, I, I yeah. love this person a lot and I want them to come to Christ. Whatever it means. You know, and, and whatever some, it means. Yeah. And sometimes we feel like, ah, oh, this part of the gospel might be a, a hard pill to swallow. So why don't I share it later? But personally for me, when I came to Christ, yeah, I really appreciated the honesty. I think, I think when you have a people right now that are starved of the truth mm -hmm. and we see a lot of TikTok videos and YouTube videos of people preaching the truth now, mm. and it's harsh most of the time. It's not pleasant to the ears. But people love it because they're starved of the truth. Yeah. And I'm not saying all people. Of course, you have many people that hate it, hate it. But the people that have, have this abyss, this, this, this hole in their soul, and it's just hungry, and they hear this for the first time, they're getting real food. It's like they go nuts over it, man. Yeah. And you see this. And that's why, why would you compromise if you're not getting a real Christian? In the, anyway, like it's, it's just you want something with substance, and for you to have that, you need to sp speak the truth. Otherwise, what different are you from the devil? You're teaching you're teaching lies or half truths, which is literally what the devil does. Uh, with my observation, those people who are desperate for the truth, they start like they start starting to wake up mm -hmm. to be like, I've been sold lies. For all of my life. And they hate Christianity after. E Sorry? And yeah, those people, like, yeah. let's say if they're hungry for the truth and you give them half truths, and they're, what they were looking for was the truth, yeah. and they find out you lied, they end up hating Christianity because of you. Yeah, yeah. And, but yeah. also, if you share the truth, yes. they recognize it. They're like, yeah. okay, finally someone is being straightforward with me. Yeah. I, I think that's something very important for us. And, and it's not just the idea of, um, what the crowd wants and where is the crowd it's more like god has entrusted us mm -hmm. with a message like this yeah L if jesus came never lied yeah always spoke the truth and preached about the coming of the kingdom he died on the cross he resurrected and he tells his disciples what you have just witnessed go out there and tell the whole world yeah why is it so hard? Because we're scared. <laughs> okay, that, that that's something we're gonna get to. Mm. But before we get to, sure, we spoke about compromising our message. Yeah, I want to touch on compromising our lifestyle. Mm. Sometimes, and yeah, I see yeah, this yeah. where people try and justify a certain way of evangelizing mm. by compromising holiness right so like that, yeah. it's usually with um, the younger people usually sometimes it's the older people yeah because the thing is like for example you get i read your verse and i i hear that all the time mm -hmm. um first corinthians 9 20 right. to the jews i became as a jew that i might win jews to those who are under the law as under the law that i mean i might win those who are under the law yeah and then I can read to you verse 21 and 22, but they stop there. And they're like, oh, you know, to, to those who are in the club, I'll go there and I'll preach the gospel to them. To those who mm -hmm. are in the bar or in in certain festival where... Or under sin... the influence, I'll also be under yeah. the influence with them. Yeah, so it's, or whether there's a festival where they're doing everything that is wicked Oh, I'll just be there because I'm the light of the world. 
right? Because Jesus said, you are the light of the world. And I'm just going to be the person that's going to guide these people. Yeah. And, and I've, I've seen that way. I've seen that in my life with people. Um, I'm not going to mention names or anything like that. But I know people that um, would be around those people. And nine times out of ten, they're the ones that ended up falling into mm. what those people were doing. Um, and they'd still try to preach to those people while they're doing what they're doing. And I'm like, yeah, just don't yeah. just, <laughs> just be part of the world or be part of Christ. Just yeah. don't, don't be in the middle. Don't be this lukewarm Christian because mm. that's worse. Just be cold or be hot. Just stop being in the middle. It's, and, and people do like, for example, they would look at Jesus and say, look, Jesus sat down with the sinners, he with the prostitutes, with, yes. uh, with the tax collectors. And like, fair enough. He didn't go to brothels but, though. He just, yeah. <laughs> he just... The, those people came to him. Yes. Right? He was willing to sit down and commune with, yeah. with them. That's what we need to do. That's right. And, and, and Paul continues in verse 21 and 22, mm -hmm. which is why I just read verse 20. Because yeah. people stop there. This is what he continues. He's saying to those who are without law, as without law, not being without law towards God, but under law towards Christ, that I might win those who are without the law. Mm. To the weak, I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Yeah. And they use that. I know that people use that verse, like as in, oh, see, but weak, he means sin. No. No. He yeah. does not. It's true. It, and, and you notice here that Paul is speaking about cultures and backgrounds. Yeah. And not Jews, only that, and Gentiles. weak means like humble, like as in a weak man, like someone yeah. that's not strong. He, he does that in order to bring those people to Christ. You know, he would humble himself to the point where it's like, wow, he's being like, it's yeah, demeaning yeah. to him. Yeah. Like those people are like, wow, I'm demeaning this person and he's taking it. That's what it means by weak. Like in their eyes, he's weak, but that shows them how much he loves them and cares about them, that brings them to God. So be it. He'll be weak. That's what he means. He did not mean sinning weak. <laughs> yeah. So so if, you, if you've if you looked at this verse in the sense of Paul is saying, to the liars, I'll be a liar. To the drunkards, I'll be a drunkard. To the fornicators, I'll be a fornicator. I would say step back That's and look at the word. verse within its context and read all of scripture with it within its context. Yeah. Jesus sat down with prostitutes and tax collectors, mm -hmm. yet he never shared in their sin. He was sinless. So the whole idea is that these people, you will always get in contact with them in the world, right? You go to work, you go to school to study, yeah. you have friends, whatever the occasion is, you're always going to be in the world. That's what Jesus says. He prayed in John 17. God, I, I don't pray that you take them out of the world, but in the world that you protect them. So we want God to guide us within this world. But if my mm -hmm. friend says, hey, you're a Christian, you seem cool. Uh, why don't you come for like, come get drunk with us? I'm like, yeah, th no. that's, I'm not going to do that. And if, if the person says, well, I'm not interested in your religion just because of that, then I'm like, well, that's something I can't compromise. Yeah, but if that same person asked me, hey, man, you want to grab a coffee? Sure. Mm. The same person that was doing horrible things yesterday, whether it's, you know, partying at the clubs or murdering people. You know, that's who he is. He's just a horrible person. He's like, yeah, man, I'm willing to listen to you about Christ. Do you want to go for a coffee? Sure. But I'm not going to be standing there holding his knife while he murders people. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That, that's that, just, uh, come yeah. on. like. So, so I think... For a conclusion, yeah. compromising the message no. and compromising no. our way of life, I would say that trust in the message of the gospel. Yeah, I don't need to change anything thinking that I can share it better yeah. or somehow something other than the gospel will convince that person yeah. to come to Christ. And 1 Corinthians 1.18 He's saying, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Amen. Romans 1.16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. First the Jews, uh, sorry, 
for the Jew first mm -hmm. and the also gentle. for the Greek. Yeah. So the idea here, same writer, First Corinthians and Romans, he's saying that the message of the cross for those who want to reject it to them is foolishness. Yeah. But to those who want to accept it or who are already in Christ, it is the power of God for them. Amen. That's why in Romans, he's saying, I'm not even ashamed. I'm going to share the gospel the way it is, because it is the power of God to salvation. So I think that's a good conclusion when it comes to, should I compromise the gospel? Yeah. By all means, a big N O no. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. And don't compromise um, your morals and what you preach, like as in practice what you preach, you know, because if you're not practicing what you preach in, in like the hopes that you're going to bring some people because you want to make yourself more relatable to them, that's not going to work. I, I know people that have gone to um, around the places where those people are, like, for example, that be outside of the clubs waiting for those people that are coming out to mm -hmm. give them like, you know, pamphlets and preach to them. Fair enough. That's, that's different. But when you're in the environment and you're partaking in what what the environment is, then you're not different to them. You're just a hypocrite. Yeah. And, and being ambassador of Christ, you're actually representing him. Mm -hmm. um, if you have an ambassador that would come from overseas, you would see there is a difference in the way they dress, what they eat, in their language and so on. Why? It's because they are foreign to you. They're yeah. coming from outside. But if we come and say we do have the label of Christian, but guess what? In every way, we are same as you and we do everything you do, then we're not representing Christ. No. We're representing the flesh, the world, and the devil. So I think that's pretty important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you spoke about fear. Mm -hmm. So compromise, it's out of the way we spoke about it. Um, let's talk about fear of preaching the gospel. Yeah. Right. Um, thank God we live in a Western world. Yeah. Um, not that there isn't fear, but it's there different. are, yeah, there are places around the world where preaching the gospel is illegal. You could get killed for One it. One way ticket to the afterlife. Yes. A speed run, basically. Yeah. You're, you're just somewhere for else. Some people... Mm. You know, that's like Paul, for example. That's what he did. He, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and and the thing with fear is that um, when we talk about God in the church, mm -hmm. right, um, we're pretty loud about it, right? Yeah. God bless you, brother. How you doing? This is that. And we speak a Christian language, right? Because mm -hmm. we, we know what a Christian language is. Yeah. We use certain words in the church. And, and we speak that, right? We we get into the church, we put our phones on silent, yeah, and we're loud about Christ. But I feel like when we leave the church, we turn back our phone, but we put our own Self selves on silent. mute. Yeah. So and and you're like, um, why didn't you take what you just had in the Christian service? Why didn't you take it out with you for the rest yeah. of your week? Um, th there is that sense of fear where people are very loud and comfortable with their Christian brothers. And I understand the psychological aspect of it. I get that, yeah. right? When you're with certain people, whatever you're talking about, if you're in agreements, you're more comfortable talking about mm. it, right? But if you're talking to someone who might be hostile to you, might disagree with you, then it's yeah. a bit more difficult. I get that. Yeah. But having the spirit having Christ in us, calling us to go out there and fulfill his commandment to preach the gospel, what is standing in our way? Yeah, nothing. I, I agree with you. And and that's what Jesus says in Luke 12, yeah, 11 but, to 12. But why do you think in the first place, we like, we, and when I say we, I mean the Christians, some of them are afraid. Like, what are they afraid of? Like, cause like we, especially in Western cultures, like for example, of course, some people are afraid that they're going to be alienated by their family if they speak out because they've just converted to Christianity. Some people are afraid that they're going to be, you know, hmm. put in prison 
or worse. Yeah. Um, some people are afraid for their families that they would, something would happen to them, like because they're living in a country where being a Christian is not permittable, not permitted. Sorry. Um, fair enough. I understand the fear there. Like it's, I get it. Like it's, um, they're trying to save their life. Fair enough. All yeah. right. It's still like you're supposed to preach the gospel, but I, I can kind of get it. But the people that are living in Western cultures, what are they afraid of? I, I think really it's that spiritual oppression. Mm. I, I understand that you could approach a person. We live in Australia. You can approach a person. Yeah. You can share the gospel. The worst thing could be like, he might swear at you, walks away. Mm-hmm. Cool. That's that's all as far as it, as it can get. But a lot of people are even struggling to open up their mouth mm. to share about Christ. The person that they are very confident about in the church. And I do feel like there is a spiritual oppression in the in the cultures that Christianity is not legal. Mm-hmm. Okay? So you, you could say that, oh, yeah, I'm free to... To preach the gospel, yeah, but the devil still has a part in it. He wants to stop you from even opening up your mouth. Okay. So what I would encourage a person in that case, if you're living in a country where preaching the gospel is legal, it's okay, people are not going to harm you for it, but yet you feel like I'm struggling to even open my mouth, mm-hmm. I'm struggling to approach people about it, I'm not even confident in regards to that, I would really say it's something spiritual. Mm. It also could be psychological, but that is a result of the spiritual side of it. So I would remind myself of what the Bible says. Luke 12, Jesus says, um, and this is what Jesus says, do not worry about how or what you should answer or what you should say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. Yeah. And that happened in Acts 4 and Mm -hmm. Acts 5, where they brought the apostles, they flogged them, they imprisoned imprisoned them, and they said, we don't want you to talk about Jesus. And this is their reply. Peter is speaking here in Acts 4. "Whether uh, Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than God, you judge. Like he's not just being confident. He's like saying, hey, I'm going to put that back to you. You're acting spiritual. You're claiming to be the leaders of Israel. You tell us, should we please man or God? God? Acts 5, same thing. And, 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 And this is what they say at the end of it in verse 29. They said, we ought to obey God rather than man. So listening to God more than listening to man, mm. obeying God more than obeying man, I believe that's important. I would encourage myself in the scripture to say, this is what God has given me. What is stopping me? Romans 8.31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Mm. So th- there is so much scripture that God is saying, I've got your back. I've given you my message, but I'm not leaving you alone. Yeah. Because at at the end of Matthew 28, when Jesus is sending them to the world, saying, and I will be with you always. Mm -hmm. So it's not the idea, Jesus did his work on earth. Um, He told the disciples to go and share to the world, and they're going to be on their own. No. Yeah. Jesus has placed his spirit in them and he is also with them. That's right. So I would encourage myself in that. I would like, when I'm like, for example, if I'm sharing to you, Mm -hmm. I I am reminded, I'm like, okay, I've got God on my side. Mm -hmm. This person has nobody. Yeah. Right. Why, why should that stop me? Uh, That should be, that should make me more courageous to say, you know what? I'm happy to share to Emil mm. because what I'm seeing here in front of me is a human being. That's right. What's behind me, guiding me, like the Spirit is leading me to share with you the gospel, is the Almighty God. 
The one who created him. Yeah. And yeah, and the one who created that human being. That's why Jesus says in Matthew 10, he's saying, whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetop. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather fear him, speaking about God, who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Like this idea that not only do I have courage because God is on my side, mm -hmm. I have this fear for God to say your fear before me means nothing. So you could, you know, threaten me, you could try and hurt me, manipulate me, whatever the case is, I'm still going to be loving you and I'm still going to share the gospel to you. I think that's so good. And Sorry. I had that experience. Sorry, I'm talking too much. That's so good. But I had that experience at work. I was driving with someone else and we drove past the church because we were talking about, you know, things in our culture that we need to get rid of. Um, you know, it's just a normal conversation, what we like, what we don't mm -hmm. like. And as we drove past the church, he looks at the church and he's like, that's something else that we need to get rid of. And I'm like, poor guy. Now I'm going to share the gospel with him. He's gone. He brought so many objections, shared with him what scripture said about it. Um, turns out that he thought he knew the Bible because he's like, man, I'm very educated in the Bible. And to me, when people say that, I'm like, share with me one verse. Quote one verse to me. Mm. I'm not telling you that you're an expert, but if you know the Bible so well, you could at least share just one verse. Quote it. And he had no idea what he not was talking John 3, about. Not even John 3.16. That's the thing. Like, not even John 3.16. But then, as we went on, I saw his heart soften more and more and mm -hmm. more. He's like, you know what? Um, I, I, I used to go to church. I baptized my kids. He, he was part of an Anglican church and so on. He's like, you know, I really feel like I'm a Christian. I said, you need to be very careful. Jesus said, not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven. So mm -hmm. I said, you're claiming to be a Christian, but your life doesn't match that. That's you right. need to be very careful with that. And that conversation, because we were on a 10 hour shift, wow. that conversation went for eight hours. He had so many questions. But to me, like, if someone speaks about Christianity, to me, it's like, I'm not going to be like, where is the corner I need to hide somewhere? I'm like, nope, great. This is the opportunity. I'm not even Sorry. approaching this person. This guy just lay out the bait. I'm just going to go yeah. for it. I mean, I've recently, I've had a talk to one of my friends who's was brought up Christian, but slowly drifted away um and i've been trying to you know talk to him and find some common ground yeah um it got to a point where he's like i don't want to talk about this topic anymore it's making me annoyed i said fair mm -hmm. enough and then a couple of weeks later he brings it up again and we go into it again and every time every now and then he you know he used to get mad at it but now recently he's it's different and look if i respect like if, for example, if he says to me, let's never talk about this again. Okay, cool. That's your choice. Yeah. I'm not going to force it on you. He's my friend. I care about him. But ultimately, if he doesn't want to hear it, he doesn't want to hear it. Um, but then he never said that. He Sometimes he's like, I don't want to talk about it right now. Mm. He gave me like, let's just agree to disagree. I'm like, okay, no problem. We can agree to disagree. And I don't want to argue with him, right? I don't want to get to an argument. I want to help him arguing with him even winning an argument all right what what good is that if he doesn't come to christ i'd, ra I'd rather lose the argument but him come to christ <laughs> like i'd rather look like a moron but him come to christ I, it doesn't mean anything to me if i win or lose or whatever it's, it's, it's nothing about me it's about him he wins he's got everything to gain and everything to lose mm. like quite literally everything yeah. to lose yeah it, that's a really good point because sometimes we get caught up of like winning Win an argument lose, yeah. and you lose the person and you're like, that's not the point. That's not the point. It's you want from your discussion is for that person's eyes to see. That's right. Because obviously spiritual blindness is what keeps people away from Christ. True. And all we can do is like, hey, just look at it with a different light. Mm. 
have you looked at that side of Christianity? Do you understand the gospel? Do you understand what Jesus has done for you? Do you understand the consequences of not having Jesus in your life? Yeah. And these things can bring awareness to people. And that's why I don't have this approach of a salesman. You know, like this person that's standing on the side. Like, yeah. Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? You're like, dude, people know when they approach a salesman. And the gospel is not meant to be preached as a product to be sold. I don't care what anyone says. It's not a product to sell. It's a human being to another human being. It's a beggar that was healed by Jesus telling another beggar about how good Jesus is. That's the amazing part of the gospel. It's not the idea that, hey, I've I've spoken to 10 people today about Jesus. Cool. How were the conversations? Were you sharing the gospel mm -hmm. in a productive way, in a spirit-led right. way? Because sometimes we think, oh, that's an achievement for me. If I share a gospel to someone, you're like, but if you haven't done it the right way, you're not bringing people closer to Christ. You're pushing people away from Christ. I think the way I, I view it is recently, like I've thought about it and the way I want, I view it now is I view everyone that needs to be saved as my brother or my sister that I have to convince to come to a doctor to be healed from their sickness, hmm. but they don't trust doctors. And I'm trying to convince them to trust the doctor. <laughs> I'm not trying to sell them anything. No, no, no. I'm just saying, hey, look, you're in need of this. Come see the doctor. Oh, I don't need this. You do. You're sick. Like, no, I'm not sick. You're sick. No, I'm not. I don't trust this doctor. I don't believe in doctors. Come to the doctor. You need. This. Yeah. So that's the way I treat it now. It's cool. it's like, what happens if I win the argument? See, like, this is how stupid you are. This is why doctors are good. Okay, I'm not going to the doctor. Mm -hmm. What good is that? Yeah. It's all about... At the end, the end of the game, the end game is they come to the doctor, but I don't compromise what they, what they need and how far they are, especially if it's something that's brought up. Like if it's something that I don't know, I'm not going to be just telling them everything that exists. I'll just, but if they ask, like, for example, if someone that's clearly living, a, a, you know, a homosexual lifestyle, ask me, do you think this is a sin? Yes. Like the friend that you were talking about previously. They were talking about when we were speaking about compromising the gospel and you're sharing, you said that person from, is from the LGBTQ. You forgot the story. Oh, no. Yeah. Just, I thought you meant the, the one I just talked about recently. Oh, no. 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 Yeah. All right. So the one before. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah. So, yeah. yeah, that like for that friend, she didn't really ask me, like, for example, is it a sin? She just said, I know that God doesn't love me because I'm living this lifestyle. I said, no, God loves you. And he can change you. You just have to come to him. But I made it abundantly clear that the change needs to happen. But it's not something that you can do on your own. Right? Cool. It's not something that we can, with our own strength, be sanctified. That's not possible. If that was the case, what's the point of the cross? Yeah. Cool. If we could save ourselves, just save yourselves. Yeah. But we can't. We needed a savior. Yeah, sorry, I do apologize. I okay. need to kind of step in. We're actually going for 40 minutes. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so it is a long topic. And that's why, like, when we got, when we started the video, we literally just got right into the topic mm -hmm. uh, because there was a lot to speak about. Yeah. Um, your conclusion in regards to compromise, the message, or your way of life, and fear, what would you like to encourage the people? I think fear the Lord, do not fear people. Don't compromise the scriptures, don't compromise the gospel, and don't compromise your life as a Christian to satisfy the flesh. Yeah, cool. Preach the truth because it is the will of God for you. Amen. Um, something I always try to encourage people to have that perspective. If Jesus was sinless, which means he's always spoken the truth, never lied once, mm -hmm. And he was still able to accomplish God's will. So what cool. excuse do we have? Right? We can do that as well. Mm -hmm. So God bless you all. We'll see you next time. And take care. Take care.